Hi everybody. So today we're going to be talking about the complement system, which is part of the immune system. The complement system actually complements or helps out your innate immune system. I'm going to focus today on the classical pathway. There's other parts to the complement system, which I'll go over in other videos. But for today, we're just going to focus on the classical pathway. Now, the classical pathway is basically going to be a type of response when your body has already been has already seen a bacteria or a pathogen in the past and has developed antibodies to it. So in the classical pathway, we are going to have something called the antigen antibody complex. Okay, so we're going to get started right now. And for the most part, in the complement system, and what's going to happen is your liver is going to release some proteins. And those proteins are going to be called complement protein. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, and so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to draw a liver. And what's going to happen is there's my liver and here is my bloodstream. Okay, there's my bloodstream right there. And just to give an example of what's happening here is um, I am going to have my complement proteins leaving the liver. So here's my complement proteins. There's actually many different types of complement proteins. We're only interested in about 11. And I'm not even going to go through all those today. But anyways, this is my liver. So now, here's where the action begins. So let's say we get this bacteria. And this bacteria comes into our body. Remember, this is something that our body has seen before. So here's the bacteria. Now, like all pathogens, they have something on them which are markers, and those markers can be uh, proteins, they can be sugars, or they can be sugar and proteins, which we call a glycoprotein. But we're going to call these antigens. And so here's an antigen, and here's an antigen, and here's an antigen, and you have these all over your, your or bacteria and pathogens have these all over their body or their cell, right? And so when your body sees these antigens, what it does is it recognizes it, this as being foreign and it knows it needs to do something because that's not supposed to be in the body. So what's going to happen is first, here's my antigens. Okay, so there's an antigen right there. And again, so the antigens are gonna form an immune response, right? So my antigens form or cause an immune response. Okay, so that's basically what antigens are going to do. Now, in my body, because we've seen this bacteria already in the past, what's going to happen is I am going to have antibodies to it, okay? So I'm going to put an antibody here. And by the way, in the complement system, there's basically two types of antibodies that are going to respond to this. It's going to be IgM and or IgG, okay? So I'm just gonna say here's my IgG right now, and this is my IgG antibody on there. And let's say this is an IgG antibody that lands on here too. So I need to have some of these kind of close together in order for this system to work. So once again, these are my antibodies. Right, that's one there, and then that's one over there. So this combined, I have the antigen with the antibody. That's my antigen-antibody complex is right there. Now, like we said it's going to happen, is I am going to have these proteins. They are going to leave the bloodstream. And what's going to happen is they are going to, one of them is going to come and basically bond between two of these antibodies. And we call this c one Q. On C1Q, I have some basically small proteins, S and R. I'm not going to write the S and R. But I have the S and the R on there. And these are going to become activated. Now, the next protein that's going to come along is going to be something that's called C4. Okay, I have C4. However, the S portion of this C1 complement protein is going to cleave or cut this C4 
not necessarily in half because we're going to have a bigger part and a smaller part, but it's basically going to cut it. It's going to clean it. And what's going to be left is what we call C4B. My C4A is going to leave. So there goes my C4A. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to get another complement protein that's going to come here also. And that's going to be C2. However, my C1 is going to cut the C2 into two pieces also. And I'm going to be left with C2A. And my C2B is going to leave. Now, really quick before I go on, some sources are now saying these should be reversed. Okay, this is the way it was originally discovered. I'm just going to do that for right now. So if you see in another somewhere else that this is actually C2B and this is C2A, just understand there is some research that's saying these should be reversed. Here's the other thing too. Is you may be wondering, why do I have C4 first and not C2? Again, these go by when they were discovered. So C4 was actually discovered before C2. Now, I have a complex here, which is basically C1, C4B, and C2A. These three combined are going to become an enzyme, or they make an enzyme called C3 convertase. Okay, C3 convertase. C3 convertase now is going to cut C3 into two pieces. Okay, and I'm going to erase this up here. So here comes my C3 now, and it's going to be cut into two pieces. So here's my C3, and C3B is going to stay, and now C3A is over here. Now this is going to be important in just a little bit. We're going to come back to this in just a little bit. The next thing that's going to happen is now I have my C4B, my C2A, and my C3B. These now make up something called C5 convertase. Okay, so and I'm, the reason I'm on the line on those is to show that they're enzymes. So now I'm going to have C5 come over. And C5 is also going to be cut in half. There's my C5B. And my C5A is going to leave also. And we're going to come back to these here because, like I said, these two here are going to play an important role in the complement system. Okay? Now, C5 is going to break off, and it's basically going to come down here onto this membrane. So here's my C5B. Right, this C5B, and then what's going to happen now? It gets a little easier. I'm going to get C6, C7, C8, and C9 attaching. So the next thing that's going to happen now is these here are basically going to twist around, and they are going to make a tube or like a straw. Okay, so they're going to twist around and they're essentially going to make like a, a tube. And that tube, let me see if I can draw a tube here. All right, so the tube would look something like this. All right, and then there's the inside. I'm gonna have my proteins on here. And I can't really draw this, but I'm gonna have some down here. And imagine now we have the tube in the middle. This tube is going to be called the membrane attack complex, also known as MAC, my membrane attack complex. Now, obviously I drew this really big, it's not going to be that big in real life. So what's going to happen now is again, this is made up of C5B, C6, C7, C8, C9. This is going to insert into the membrane of the bacteria, membrane attack, it attacks the membrane, right? So once it does that, what's going to happen here, let me use red. So what's going to happen now is I am going to get water and other ions, such as sodium, potassium, calcium, things such as that. They are going to flood into the inside 
of the bacteria. Now, it's just like a water balloon. If I put water into a water balloon, it's going to get bigger and bigger and eventually it may burst. Either way, with the ions and all this going on, I'm going to get lysis of this bacteria. So this bacteria is basically going to die because of the fact that all this is coming in. And then just to reiterate, this here is my MAC right there. Okay, that's my MAC. Now, there's two other things that are going to happen here. We've already said that this is going to lead, right? And now we have this C5, we have the C5A and the C3B. So here's what's going to happen now, is basically the C3A, I'm going to move this over this way just a little bit. So this C3A is going to do, actually both of these are going to do something that we call chemotaxis. So basically what chemotaxis is, is these are going to go and it's going to get white blood cells and try to get them to come to the area. So chemotaxis is when white blood cells are alerted to come to an area. Let's Okay, and in this case, what's happening is the reason these are being alerted is simply because of the fact that we have this bacteria, right, that's in the body. C3 is going to go and it's going to activate two different white blood cells. It's going to activate mast cells and it's going to activate basophils. Now, the mast cells and the basophils are going to release basically things that cause inflammation, prostaglandins, uh, leukotrienes, histamine, things like that that cause inflammation. So these are going to release what we call the mediators of inflammation. And again, that's going to be my leukotrienes, my histamine, my prostaglandins, and things such as that. That's what these are going to release here. Okay, so my C3 has activated the mast cells and the basophils, which are going to release things that are going to cause inflammation. On the opposite side, I have the C5A now. The C5A is going to go and it's going to get macrophages. If you remember, macrophages are big eaters, right? So there's my macrophage, and it's also going to activate neutrophils. So here's a neutrophil right here. Okay? This C3 here is what we call an opsonin. So what an opsonin does, let me find a different color to write this. Let's go with green. <clears throat> this C3 is going to be an opsonin. So an opsonin basically makes an opsonin basically makes a bacteria or a pathogen more attractive to eat, to eat to, for phagocytosis. So what's going to happen is we're going to get this all the way around here so this is not as dangerous to eat, okay? So I'm just going to say it makes pathogens easier for phagocytosis. Easier to phagocytize, okay? Cytotize, yeah, I'm squeezing that in there, okay. And the reason I'm leaving this big space open is I still have this macrophage right here. So now, the macrophage, or before I get to the macrophage, on the C3B, we have a receptor. So I'm just gonna draw the receptor looking like this, okay? And the good thing is, on this macrophage, we also have a receptor. Let's draw this in red. So now my macrophage, I'm also going to have a receptor that fits onto the C3B. Okay, so it fits onto that C3B. And let's 
to like this real fast. Okay, and this is my macro phase. Now, once the macro phase attaches to the C3B, right? This is basically my opsonization, right? The fact that we're making this easier for this to, to eat this or phagocytize it. What my macrophage is going to do is it's going to get pseudopods, right? And it's going to come and it's going to surround this whole thing and pull it inside of itself. And then once it pulls it inside of itself, that's phagocytosis, once it pulls it inside itself, then it will break this down. If you remember, it's going to put the antigens on its cell membrane and present them. Uh, if it's neutrophils that are doing this, the neutrophils are just going to spit the antigens out. But either way, what's going to happen is this macrophage is going to surround this whole area. Okay? So opsonization, and opsin is something that's going to help with opsonization. And opsonization is basically when we make this less harmful for the, the macrophage or white blood cell to attack. So to go back real quick, my C3A is going to activate mast cells and basal fills, which are going to activate my mediators of inflammation. Those were going to be my leukotrienes, my histamine, my prostaglandins, and things such as that. Um, my C5 is going to get the macrophage, which is going to attach to the C3B, which is an opsonin. And then it's just going to engulf this whole thing by phagocytosis, pull it inside, and break it all down. So that's basically the complement system right there. So thank you so much for watching.